Welcome to the BioWhisperer channel and the topic today is perspectives on human genetic traits. We will be looking at transmission genetics. Here is part 1 an introduction. It's interesting that the fact that two people have the same genotypes doesn't necessarily mean that they'll have the same phenotypes. That's happening because the phenotype isn't inherited directly and environmental factors play an important role when determining it. Thus, even identical twins can have different phenotypes. One of the main areas we have understood about transmission is that we can link up genotype with phenotype. We define genotype as what alleles are actually present at the various genes, whilst phenotype is referred to as the physical appearance of individuals. In identifying the link, we aim to better understand transmission which includes inheritance and rise of new variants. Likewise, to better relate the biological functions, we need to understand the associations and this helps in developing a better understanding towards disease therapeutics including drug development processes. Notwithstanding that, both genotype and phenotype is never consistent. In fact, variations arise. Variations within genotype are attributable to mutations, insertion and or deletions also known as indels, and more broadly rearrangements of genes. On the other hand, variations within phenotype will include metabolism, genetic diseases, as well as environment interactions. The role of environment is postulated to be important in the nurture role of the genotype, which is the inherited genetic material. Studies on identical twins that are unfortunately separated since young and grew up in different environment seems to indicate the key role of the environment. Moving on to part 2, we will review the differences between genotype and phenotype. Let's review this table, which highlights some of the differences. In terms of definition, genotype refers to an individual's collection of genes that encode for a particular or a few traits, whilst phenotype refers to an individual's appearance. Genotype is typically inherited and depends on the DNA sequence, which can be characterized by sequencing or genotyping techniques. On the other hand, phenotype is dependent upon the genotype, epigenetics, plus environmental factors, and phenotype is typically not inherited. We may ask what is then a gene variant? It refers to the permanent change in the DNA sequence that otherwise makes up a gene. Variants can affect one or more nucleotides but might not always cause the disease due to the codon usage, which encodes for the respective amino acid when the DNA sequence is translated. Inherited or hereditary variants are passed from parent to child and are present throughout a person's life. These variants are also called germline variants because they are present in the parent's egg or sperm cells, which are also called germ cells. Non-inherited variants occur at some time during a person's life and are present only in certain cells, not in every cell in the body. These variants cannot be passed to the next generation. Non-inherited variants can be caused by environmental factors such as ultraviolet radiation or errors acquired during replicative cell division. If the event leading to mosaicism occurs during development, it is possible that both somatic and germline cells will become mosaic. If the mosaicism occurs only in a somatic cell population, the phenotypic effect will depend on the extent of the mosaic cell population, however, there would be no risk of passing on the mosaic genotype to offspring. On the other hand, if the mosaicism occurs only in a germline cell population, the individual would be unaffected, but his or her offspring could be affected. Next up, we have a quick review of terminology, we define a gene as part of a chromosome which encodes for a certain trait, whereas an allele represents different forms of the same gene that determines the phenotype. For instance, we might have two of the same alleles termed homozygous or different alleles from each parent termed heterozygous. Alleles are further described as dominant if it masks the expression of other alleles or they are termed as recessive if it is only expressed when no other alleles are present. Within the broader scope of how we describe traits, it is categorized into Mendelian and non-Mendelian traits summarized in the boxes on the screen. Between them for Mendelian trait, we see dominant or recessive expression which is not influenced by the environment. For non-Mendelian traits on the other hand, multiple alleles exist in the population with no true dominance or recessiveness and environment or polygenic factors might play greater role. Let's look the scientist who discovered these Mendelian traits of transmission. A very long time ago, Gregor Mendel, a 
a monk who studied inheritance in pea plants, first observed seven major traits which he took time to understand different generational phenotype before establishing concepts of dominant and recessive traits. These traits include phenotypic differences at the seed, flower, pod and stem of the pea plant. An illustration is provided above. For this discovery, Mendel is also honored with the title Father of Modern Genetics. Moving on to Part 3, we will provide an inheritance overview. From an inheritance perspective, we see detection of genetic variants, typically using genetic markers, being useful to help in evaluation of inheritance, which in turn is interconnected to manifestation of phenotype. For the evaluation of inheritance, admixture mapping, which is a powerful method of gene mapping for diseases or traits that show differential risk by ancestry. Other approaches include linkage studies as well as single nucleotide polymorphism screening. When traits are manifested, they typically fall under direct Mendelian or non-Mendelian categories. Sex-linked as well as complex traits are typically non-Mendelian in nature. Autosomal dominant inheritance is defined as where a single, abnormal gene on one of the autosomal chromosomes from either parent can cause certain diseases. One of the parents will usually have the disease, since it is dominant, in this mode of inheritance. An example of the pedigree chart is shown below where just one copy of the abnormal gene is sufficient. The likelihood of transmitting an autosomal dominant disease to offspring is 50%, since the child can inherit the healthy or sick allele. Typical examples include Huntington's disease characterized by enlarged lateral ventricles and basal ganglia atrophy, whereas another example the Marfan syndrome is associated with usually exceptionally tall with long fingers and rather flat feet. They may have a spinal curve, scoliosis, and is an inherited disorder that affects connective tissues. Autosomal recessive inheritance is defined as where an abnormal gene on one of the autosomal chromosomes from each parent is required to cause the disease. People with only one abnormal gene in the gene pair are called carriers, but since the gene is recessive, they do not exhibit the disease. A typical example is cystic fibrosis. The CTFR gene that lies on chromosome 7 controls the movement of salts, sodium chloride, thus governs the movement of water and consistency of the secretions from these cells. Mutation of this gene predisposed to the poor movement of salt, water across the cells and thus cause thickening of the mucus. The thickened mucus along the lining of the exocrine ducts and lumen are the hallmark presentation of cystic fibrosis. For people living with cystic fibrosis, the mucus in the lungs is thicker than normal. This thick mucus can build up in the airways, allowing germs to thrive and become a source of infection and inflammation. Inflammation is caused by your immune system's response to something harmful, and inflammation can lead to decreased lung function. X-linked recessive inheritance is a mode of inheritance in which a mutation in a gene on the X chromosome causes the phenotype to be always expressed in males and in females who are homozygous for the gene mutation. In other words, all males with mutant or abnormal copy of the gene are affected, whereas heterozygous females are not affected. A typical example is hemophilia, which is an inherited bleeding disorder in which the blood does not clot properly. This can lead to spontaneous bleeding as well as bleeding following injuries or surgery. Blood contains many proteins called clotting factors that can help to stop bleeding. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, Please smash the like button and subscribe to this channel for future updates.